Hi everyone. So last year, Angela Fair interviewed me on her YouTube channel. It was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed meeting her and I found we had a lot in common. As part of the interview, I did a demonstration on how I create textures in my watercolor. It was just a simple painting showing one of the ways that I create textures. And I've been hanging on to this video for some time, thinking I may add it to one of my future courses. But now I've decided I'm just going to share it with you on my YouTube channel. And for those who follow Angela as well, you've probably seen this before, but I hope that you'll get something more out of it by watching it again. So I hope you enjoy it. And here it is. So I'm going to do a very simplified landscape for you to show you how I create uh, textures in my imaginary watercolors. I'm going to be using um, Dela Rowney sepia ink and I'm going to use Winsor & Newton aqua green and Daniel Smith quinacrid and burnt orange. Now you know um, that those two colors, if I mix them too much, I'm going to create mud, so I have to be careful there too. I'm going to spritz the, the, the paper at the bottom a little bit, and I'm going to start off with the burnt orange, because I really love this color. And you see what happens because I spritzed the paper. Um, I... Uh, getting these interesting textures and I'm just going to add a little bit of the aqua green which is an intense color and I am letting it touch in in some areas um, and I'm even going to um, just create a grayish color where I've mixed them here. Now before this is dry I want to do something to create some texture here. I go to the fabric store and I look in the netting department and I get these interesting uh, materials I don't like to get the regular netting with the little round holes. I, I try to find things like this, which has, I don't know how well you can see this. It's a very uneven design netting, but I use it a lot. And when you cut pieces off, always make sure not to create straight lines. Now, my paper's already, because I've been talking, um, getting dry, so I... Um, Um, have to just wet it again and what I want to do is lay this down and I've got all sorts of little off cuts that I use um, so, it, so there's no um, sharp edges uh, and I don't want to do it everywhere and in this area here I'm going to take some sepia ink and I'm going to run some sepia ink down this part and you have to be careful when you're doing sepia ink too that you don't um, put, add too much because um, you can get overkill with that. And just taking some granulation medium by Winsor & Newton now and just adding it to the sepia ink so that it runs down and breaks up and creates interesting textures. Um, somebody t uh, from my YouTube channel said that Winsor & Newton has discontinued this uh, granulation medium which really 
surprised me and I hope it's not true because I use this a lot and I need some something down here so maybe I need some sepia ink down here too just to because this, otherwise it looks foreign to the um, to the rest of the painting and maybe I'll even just drop some in here and let's see um, I've got my board at a 45 degree angle so that um, everything runs down and same here I just want to um, create some interesting textures now that looks better and I like to sort of create take the pipette and just create some lines in the piece I like what's happening here and I like what's happening here. This ties into that now. Now at this stage, I really just need to let let it dry. Um, I, I, I don't want to go over the uh, little granules because they'll move around and then you won't see them. But once they dry, you can actually paint over uh, acrylic ink and it stays put. So the next stage will be to put some trees in here and some sky area. Now that the painting is dry, before I do the sky and a tree, I'm looking to see if any of this area needs fixing. And um, when I took off the netting, I love the pattern it um, gave here, but I'm not that happy with this down here. So what I'm going to do is take a stiff brush I want to de-emphasize this a bit. I'm just going to wet it, keep dabbing it. See, I'm getting quite a lot of, lifting quite a lot of the color. What I like here is I'm able to actually lift the pattern and um, it's creating some texture. Yeah. I, See that that's much better. That was a little too dominant. I think what I'll do is just add a little more aqua in there and and a little more orange. Just very lightly add some more orange so this is how you can fix um, areas that didn't work out too well now another thing I'm looking at here is I like the, the fact that this area is pale it's a further away hill but this area which is close up because I put a lot of um, granulation medium in, it, it's the, the paint has diluted quite a lot. So, just let me spritz this before it gets hard lines. Um, so, it, this probably needs a little more turquoise, but I really want it to be very soft. So, I'm just going to, and I don't want it to be everywhere because I like the patterns here, the blooms basically that were created by um, water and a mixture of that and the granulation medium. So I just want to add a little more um, paint and let that run down Um, th 
this area here. Um, and I think that I'm, I'm going to let that dry be before I decide whether it needs any more. And I, um, if it doesn't dry too light, I kind of like where it is right now. I'm going to leave this paler. Um, so now I'm going to do uh, the sky. I'm going to take my one inch flat brush and I want to wet the whole sky area. Um, Uh, quite well. I'm going to prop this up again at my 45 degree angle and I'm using the same aqua as I did um, in the land area. When you've got it where you want it you can actually then put it flat. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth with some Windsor & Newton um, raw sienna just want a little bit of warmth in the, in the sky. And I'm avoiding this little area because I, that's where I want to do a tree. I'm just going to put that flat. And again, I have to let this dry before I can do the tree. Okay, so I'm going to put a tree here and I have to decide now the size of the tree. Because you're looking up this hill, uh, the tree needs to be rather small uh, for the scale of the painting. And so I'm going to again use the same aqua but I'm going to also use some uh, yellow, raw sienna and burnt sienna and I just want to do a fairly small tree. I like using my hog's hair brush for this. I now I may have done that a little too um, dark so I'm going to just dab it a little bit. I think that's okay for the size right now. Just wanted to fix that. I want some variety in the tree. Okay. So I'm going to mix up a brown for the trunk and I always start off with a thinner trunk because you can always make it wider. Anchor that down. Um. So at this stage, I like to leave this painting for a couple of days because maybe I need to have some bushes here and I want to fix this area here. I could do some grasses here, but I want to think about it first because I may just want to get rid of that. And the way I would get rid of it 
is with Dr. P. H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I cannot do without this paint. It's um, on their site they say it's a watercolor, but it's a very, very thick watercolor, and I could actually totally get rid of all of that, let it dry, and then do whatever I want, uh, paint over it. But for now, I'm going to leave this for a few days and I'm going to think about it, but maybe I want to do something here. I, I don't know yet um, and I don't want to rush it. One of the things um, I mentioned about this netting, I purchased it at a place called Joanne's Fabric Store and I believe they are nationwide so you could um, try and I d I'm not sure if you can order it online. You could see if maybe there's a, a Joanne's Fabric Store in your area. So let's remove the tape. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I had a lot of fun doing it. So thanks for watching.